Hey guys, Miss Bass here. And I wanted to talk to all of you guys about what I call Mindful Minute. Now I got this amazing idea from Health Moves Minds, which is the new program supported by Shape America. You really need to check it out, I promise you. But I was always wondering, how do I end class? How do I get equipment taken care of? Now that we have um, all of our COVID, how do I get the equipment cleaned if we use any? How do I calm my kids down before they leave? How do I have that discussion type part that they really, really want us to? Because sometimes, have y'all ever had class and you look at your clock and you're like, oh my goodness, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, line up, here they go to your teacher, bye, see you next class. Um, is that the type of transition you really want for your classes? I think not. <laughs> so, for 12 years, it was kind of rush, hustle, bustle, use as much time as possible. And this year, I was like, I've got to do something different. So when I heard about the Mindful Minute, I was like, yes, I've got to do that. So here's how I use my Mindful Minute. Now, I see my students once a week for 50 minutes. Okay, so the last five. Now I say the last five, but we all know that sometimes it's less, even sometimes it may be more. Who knows, it depends on what you have going on. But I average about the last five minutes of class, I have my students pack up, clean up. They're all about, they organize the equipment, they get it out, they put it up, they take care of it, teaching that responsibility. But after they do that, they grab a quick drink from their water bottles, if they have them, and then they go to their dots and they may sit, or they may lay, but no talking. Then I play some calming music and this is how it goes. So this is just a timer, a calming timer that I found on YouTube and I tell everybody, you may sit, you may lay, but no talking, no moving, and deep breaths in through your nose, out through your mouth, in through your nose, out through your mouth. And as you notice in the background, I do have my lights lower. Now, typically I actually turn out most of my lights, but just for the lighting here, I wanted you guys to be able to see me. And so I do turn the lights down low. And so you're gonna see some kids fidget. You're gonna see some kids almost fall asleep. <laughs> but it teaches them that breathing, that relaxing and that calming. And what I tell them to do is during this time, I want you to reflect on what we did in PE. What did we do in class today? Sometimes I'll just see if they remember. Sometimes I'll be like, for example, we're working on casting and reeling and aiming. Would you think about how we did those things today? So I only played one, a one minute, but they have up to two minutes and probably longer. Just go on YouTube and look calming timer. And they have all sorts, super fun, super relaxing, calming music. like. There have been days that we run out of time and they're like, Miss Bass, but what about the mindful minute? Isn't that what you want for your students to be asking to calm and relax? I love it. It's one of my favorite things. Okay. So also during that time, while the music's playing, I'm walking around the gym, talking, reminding them to breathe, spraying equipment and cleaning it between my classes. That took so much pressure off of me of how when, why, so the kids are calm, they're in their space, they have a job to do. I just walk and calmly talk to them about what I want them to know. Then, real quick, that takes about one to two minutes. Then the next two minutes, I ask the class, guys, today we did yada, yada, yada. And here's how I do it for the younger ones. So for the younger students, let's say if we're in a jumping unit. Guys, we worked on jumping and hopping and hopscotch. Okay, everybody stand up. Show me jumping. They show you jumping on two feet. Show me hopping. They show you hopping on one foot. Show me hopscotch. All right. Jump, hop, jump, hop. Okay, guys, which one was your favorite? Show it to me now. And then they'll choose jumping, hopping, or hopscotch. Now, whether they verbalized it to you or not, they just looked at the skills they did, you quickly reviewed those skills, and then they made a choice of which one they thought was their favorite. So I do that a lot with my kindergartners and my first graders. I'm like, show me this, show me that, show me your favorite. And if we have extra time, I'll point to a student and be like, hey, why is that your favorite? Fabulous, 
super simple, super easy cheesy, but I promise you that show me part, huge, 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 huge. I loved it. So then we step up into second, third, and fourth grade, and our questions towards the end of class, they change a little bit. Examples. I do like to start out when I was getting my students used to these questions. I did start a lot about which one was your favorite. And still with the older ones, sometimes I'm like, show me or go stand by. Okay, if I need to get them up and move in, if I really just want them to do one more thing before they line up for me. Then it was raise your hand and tell me which one was your favorite and why. And because it's fun. That's not an answer. But why was it fun? And I promise you, you will be absolutely amazed by your students' answers. Why did you choose long rope over short rope? Why did you choose that casting was more challenging than reeling when you were fishing? Why do you prefer overhand throw to an under overhand throw to an underhand toss? Then lately, like last week, we did putting and driving and chipping, and they had to tell me the differences and the similarities in sentence form. The differences in putting and chipping are blah, blah, blah. The similarities between putting and chipping are blah, blah, blah. Guys, I have been mind blown by my students this semester. It wasn't even technically five minutes. I got my equipment cleaned. My students are calm. They've taken that time to reflect that social emotional calming, reflecting on what you're doing, how you handled a situation, and then the skills, reviewing and discussing. Guys, I promise you, if you take just a few minutes or even one or two minutes at the end of your class, if you can turn off the lights, cool. If not, that's okay too. I don't always get there. If you can play some calming music, that's great. If not, it's okay. But if you give your students, I promise, some time to sit and think for just a moment, and then to either show you or tell you, then I promise you will be like, okay, my students truly are learning and listening to what I do. So it's a great time for calming, social, emotional, cleaning, assessment. Guys, I promise you, you will have no problems with it once you figure out your system. But anyways, a great way to transition out of class, mindful minute. I hope you enjoy. Bye.